We're not simply giving away some IP. We're not simply saying, oh, we're going to share some part of our company. No, we're going to build a new company that's going to take this brand new market, this market in China, the largest and the first wide, widespread development of smart grids, and take that and build a company that can actually have this knowledge go across borders. And we're not going to run into the conflicts you would see here. So we're creating a lot of value. There's a big pie, big opportunity, and we're creating Chinese-grown technology, talent that we plan to deploy in a lot of other places. We'd like to take your questions now. Well, <laughs> the model is there, but it's not being tested in the overseas market at this stage. And one of the ways to, uh, over, uh, to prevent any problems is sell 30 a third of your share to the Chinese. Would you do you're, that? You're still on that. You still yeah, want to yeah. sell 33% of the company. I mean, the base of my question is the fact that I think at the end of the day, it's the business structure that's going to be key to it. It's the implementation of your strategy is going to depend upon your structure. Okay. And I, so my question is, would you sell 30% of the company? Datang is a, is a state-owned, um, as, as a group, it's mm. a state-owned enterprise. So. We are saying that we would have a joint venture where they would be a very strong participant. No, I'm saying sell 30% of your equity into to Datang. We're a public company. They could if they wanted to. Would you recommend it to your shareholders? We actually love the idea of partnering with Chinese companies. I think if you look at the rest of the clean tech industry today, the most successful companies, when they're in China, have very close relationships with the government. So hold on here. You're John Chambers, and uh, this gentleman has just asked you a very interesting question. Would you? recommend to your shareholders that they uh, tender up 33% of their shares at uh, the slightly above the current market price, perhaps, or, yeah. or maybe slightly below. To this, For privileged uh, uh, access to the Chinese yeah, market. To, 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 uh, let's put you on the spot. What do you think? Since, since John Chambers is no longer the, the, the CEO of the company, um, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll, I'll answer that question. So we've, the idea behind a relationship that we're forming with a company is that it's, it ha it, it has, there has to be some trust. We're not forming it out of just random luck. They have a very strong interest of gaining market share in a lot of their markets. We're creating a lot of value in this new company. And as business people, understanding that we're creating a lot of value for Cisco, and this value could be spread around, multiplied many times around the world, having a shareholder that would be willing to pay a premium to actually go in and have a shared interest in both companies, I think that makes a lot of economic sense and firms the relationship between both companies. So you would recommend it? Under the right circumstances yeah. and economic conditions, yes. i just add that AES, which is a very successful American power company, has done something similar, selling, I think it's 12% of its stake to, mm. to, to Chinese investors. And, and I think that's something that we'll see more and more. And it's really a question for our shareholders and for what we recommend as to what the price is and what the benefit is long term. Okay, great. Thanks, Greg.